Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, I hope you're having a great day or night in Jesus. We're so thankful you're here with us. We're going to be looking at the Coverdale Bible today. Miles Coverdale is kind of, to me, doesn't get the recognition he deserves, at least not that I've read, in Bible translation and different things that happened in the 1500s. What a seminal pivotal time in human history. So let's get started. The Coverdale Bible, we're just on Wikipedia, it says it's early modern English, 1535, because remember modern English began with Tyndale in 1526, translating the Bible not into the language of the people. I mean, it was in English, but it was an accurate translation of Hebrew and Greek, and he thought the people would change their vernacular from Middle English, they didn't call it all that back then, to what we know as Modern English, and that's the reason Modern English is a very great receptor language for the Bible. So it's the Masoretic text in the Old Testament. It's the Greek New Testament of Erasmus, also the Vulgate, German and Swiss German Bibles, the Luther Bible, Zurich Bible, and Leo Judd's Bible. And it's the first complete Bible printed in English, early modern English. So I was reading a little bit about Coverdale. What a guy, you know, he lived like a long time. He lived from the late 1400s to, I forget, it was like 1488 to something. Let's just see. We'll see how old he was. 1488 to 1569. So what's that? That's 81 years, isn't it? And... Uh, so it was the first modern English translation of the Bible, not just the Old Testament or New Testament. The first complete printed translation of the Bible, Wycliffe's Bible in manuscript. Because remember, Wycliffe actually was translating before the Gutenberg, before the printing press. The later editions, folio, which is big, quarto, midsize, um, published in 1537 were the first complete Bibles printed in England. The 1537 folio edition carried the royal license and was therefore the first officially approved Bible translation in English. Remember as Tyndale's getting burnt at the stake there at Valverde Castle on October 6, 1536 and he's crying out as he's burning God opened the King of England's eyes near simultaneously the King of England was saying you can print Bibles. And we know that whole deal. All right, the Psalter from the Coverdale Bible is included in the Anglican Book of Common Prayer beginning in 1662 and in all editions of the U.S. Episcopal Church Book of Common Prayer until 1979. So, you know, the Book of Common Prayer basically gave Great Britain its culture for many centuries, at least a few centuries. And you still like, they have like, I watch it sometimes, the BBC will do like hymns and all this kind of stuff. They're really beautiful. It's really a good thing usually. Um, Mighty Fortress is our God. And uh, so Tyndale, beginning in 1662, played a huge role in that. So a little bit of the history, I found this so fascinating. The place of publication in 1535 was long disputed. The printer was assumed to be either switchover in Zurich or services in Soter in Cologne, and Soter, excuse me, not services and Soter in Cologne or Marburg. Since the discovery of Guido Latre in 1997, the printer has been identified as Merton de Kaiser in Antwerp. Publication was partially financed by Jacobus van Materen in Antwerp, whose sister-in-law, Adriana de Wyden, married John Rogers, who was burned at the stake by Bloody Mary for translating Bibles. The other backer of the Coverdale Bible was Jacobus van Materen's nephew, Leonard Ortels, father of Abraham Ortilius, the famous humanist geographer and cartographer, mapmaker. Although... Coverdale was also involved in the preparation of the Great Bible, and in reading like a little biography of Coverdale in preparation for this, he had his hand maybe in a few different Bibles from 1535 through uh, 1540. He had to be exiled, though, a couple different times because things changed uh, on the, the British Isles. The Coverdale Bible continued to be reprinted. The last of over 20 editions of the whole Bible or its New Testament appeared in 1553. The Coverdale based his New Testament on Tyndale's translation. And again, reading this little biography, he was actually a friend of Tyndale's, 
I've read, I tried to read every biography I could on Tyndale himself. For the Old Testament, Coverdale used Tyndale's published Pentateuch and possibly his published Jonah. I think I've got reviews of that here on the channel. It's been years. He apparently did not make use of any of Tyndale's other unpublished Old Testament material, Matthew Bible, like the Matthew's Bible, which is John Rogers' Bible. You know, poor Tyndale, he's freezing to death in Vilvord Castle after having been betrayed by Henry Phillips, I think it was. And, you know, he's just asking... You know, I'm freezing to death and I need needle and thread to sew up my clothes, but just give me some stuff so I can keep translating the Bible. That's, that's a man right there. He wrote The Obedience of the Christian Man, which said the gospel was Acts 2.38. Instead, Coverdale himself translated the remaining books of the Old Testament and the Apocrypha. Coverdale used his working intermediate knowledge of Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Now, being a Hebrew Greek scholar, he worked primarily from German Bibles, Luther's Bibles, Swiss German version, Zurich Bible of Huldrych Zingli, who, you know, Zingli and Luther they like excommunicated each other on over communion and leo judd and latin sources including the vulgate so the coverdale bible um man what a thing i've probably have i done a review of a replica coverdale bible i cannot remember because i think we're over five thousand videos now that includes our church services and stuff too but uh I think we've probably made well over 4,000 videos. Check out our playlist. Hey, God bless you. We love you. Fall in love with the Bible and Jesus Christ, the Savior presented in the Bible. He's the Word made flesh. Some people say the Torah made flesh. I think that's cool. But uh, the Logos, Father in flesh. And uh, join us daily. And when you hit subscribe, please hit the bell notification. And share with your friends. Put it on social media. We'll talk with you later. God bless. Bye-bye.